as much as there is something to learning it on your own, there's always going to be a time where you need help from somebody else. And you can either do it by yourself and be frustrated and spend hours and hours and hours trying to do something, or you can reach out to people that you can know and trust and that you like. Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and in this week's interview, I'm talking to Kristen Wilson from the Society for Creative Founders, and she is walking us through seven reasons why community over competition is so important for creative entrepreneurs. But honestly, we end up talking about so much more than just community over competition. We got a little fired up about a couple different topics, and I can't wait for you to hear it. Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here this morning. Me too. I'm really excited to chat about this topic because I think it's really important and it's actually been a while since I talked about this on here. So, um, but actually before we get into any of that, can you give us a little rundown of who you are and what you do for people who might not know you? Yeah. So I am the owner of the Society for Creative Founders, and we basically are an online community for creatives, all creative entrepreneurs, whether you are a maker or an artist or a designer. Um, we teach online classes. We have an annual conference. We have alumni retreats, and we also have a membership community that all kind of ties in together to a very strong community mindset. Um, this is something that is incredibly important to me, and so I'm thrilled that we are talking about this today because I feel like it's something that is not talked about enough, especially in the creative industry. So I am all about helping people, no matter where they are in their journey, whether they're brand new, just getting started in business, or they've been in business for 10 plus years, that they can find a place within what we are teaching to help them continue and further their journey to make a, this is a successful business and a life that they love. You know, everybody in my audience who's watching this video will relate to that because they're all over the place in terms of where they are, whether or not they've even started a business or if they've been doing it for a while. So that's encouraging. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like what my next question should be, but I don't really, I don't have one. I think that we should just like start <laughs> talking about the topic. Like, okay. Let's so <laughs> I already talked about it in the intro before we got on here and told everybody what we're going to be talking about, but you have kind of seven reasons why community over competition is so important and you already touched on how important community is to you and I have talked about this many times with my audience too about community and especially like you know most of my audience are calligraphers letterers and people who are trying to break into usually the wedding industry and so mm -hmm. I think that it can be really fierce competition for people trying to do oh, that. Yeah. And so I hope that this is going to be really encouraging for people. Yes, that is my ultimate goal. I wrote down a few notes that I wanted to make sure to touch on, but um, this is in 2020, it'll be my 10th year as an entrepreneur. And in that time I was a wedding planner and I was a wedding stationer and I had an Etsy shop and I had things in retail shops and like both wholesale and consignment kind of ways. And I have done I am known, my letterpress style, or my wedding style, when I was a stationer primarily, it was letterpress and very, like, I worked with a lot of calligraphers, and swirly girly goodness was what I was kind of known for with a southern flair. Like, a lot, I worked with a lot of southern monogrammed, like, letterpress to just traditional style, but there comes to a point where in order for you to be in the best that you can, reaching out and having a community of fellow people, especially in the wedding industry, rather than trying to wear all the hats at once. Like it's better to be a master at one thing than a little bit good at all of these. I would rather be a master at figuring out how to do type and design and all that. And then if I can work with a calligrapher on their thing, then it's like, oh my gosh, I love your style. Can you please bring it in? Because I want to highlight you in this way. It's amazing to me to see it all come together in that way. Well, and not to mention, so there's like, there's like that side of things that you're talking about where it's like, you get these amazing collaborations, but mm -hmm. there's also the side that's just like, it's a much better environment to be part of. Like, it's already hard enough being a creative small business owner and being like confined mm -hmm. to, you know, like doing stuff in your audience or your office and having your own audience and having to do your own, you know, your own everything essentially as a small business owner. So that's already hard enough. But if you're, if you're also trying to compete with all the other people doing that and not being friends with them, like it's lonely. So that one was actually number one. So you can choose to do things either lonely by yourself and completely figuring out on your own, or you can choose to invest in a group and kind of build your community mindset in that way. 
I literally wrote down lonely or group question mark because like I wanted to talk about that because in our membership community, it's a very active group where people are like, I'm looking for a vendor for this, or I'm trying to figure out how to learn this program. Or does anybody have like just this past weekend, somebody was like, does anybody have any familiarity with Printful or with Shopify or like which plugins I can put in for my website here? And granted, you can go to Google and you can learn those things. And that's originally how I started is that I went to Google for everything because we didn't have Facebook groups like 10 years ago when I started, but also to see that group where somebody hopped on and she was like, yeah, I know how to put in that, um, Shopify plugin, let me know if you want to schedule a zoom link and we'll do a share a screen share so I can show you how to do it. And I was like, holy cow, like that's so awesome because as much as there is something to learning it on your own, there's always going to be a time where you need help from somebody else and you can either do it by yourself and be frustrated and spend hours and hours and hours trying to do something, or you can reach out to people that you can know and trust and that you like, not just random, put it out in a group and hope fingers crossed, like out into the oblivion to hope for it. But if it's a group of people specifically that you know that we are all here to encourage each other, to lift each other up and to share our gifts well, that is something that is amazing to see. And especially within our alumni group, we see it happening all the time where people are like, I'm trying to learn this or can you help me with that? It's a way that people, you know, when you build each other up, it's a very positive environment and it's much more helpful, especially if you're having a hard time. You know what I mean? Like it's when it comes to that, dealing with all that by yourself or <laughs> sharing about it with our husbands or friends that don't necessarily understand that aren't necessarily small business owners versus a community of people who are there in day in and day out every single day who completely understand it it's much less lonely as far as that goes for sure okay, <clears throat> okay. i didn't mention to the <laughs> audience at the beginning of this <clears throat> but i'm really sick and so i'm like gonna be clearing my throat and i have a cough drop in my mouth too <clears throat> sorry not. excuse me um, I think at the end, we'll talk more about your community and like your membership and your conference and all that stuff, which is such a good resource, obviously, for people. You've been talking about how awesome your group is and love it. I feel like I want to be part of it now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, well, let's just keep rolling then. What's number two? Okay. So number two is that there is enough room for everyone. Um, this is one thing that is huge for all creatives, like if I could shout this one from the rooftops, I would put it all over billboards, like put it in light, say all the things to say that there's enough room for everyone. Just last week, um, a friend of mine reached out and she said, okay, so this is my product. This is something that I do. This is something I want to branch out to that I think I would be really, really great at. And I have a passion for it and a drive for it, but it already exists. So do I really want to put it out there? And do I really want to put it together? And I like, you know that um, there's that one gif of the cat who's like going crazy on the keyboard. It was all I could do not to like da -da 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 in my response or even like the Kermit one because I was like, do not set yourself apart by saying, oh, there's already somebody out there that does that and I don't need to. Because like think of it this way, when you go to a, the Hallmark store or even to Target or anywhere, there's cards, there's thousands of cards that you can pick from. What if there was only one card designer? Like one card designer, one card design, or one whatever, that would be really boring. And if you had nothing that was different just on the card perspective, I wouldn't be able to find that perfect thinking of you or that perfect welcome to your baby card or welcome to your baby card, you know what I meant. Or <laughs> <laughs> welcome, like happy birthday or, you know, congratulations on the move and all of these things because different personalities need different things. And your ideal client wants to hear from you, your ideal customer will buy something from you that somebody else has because it's from you. And I personally could not be strong enough in feeling this way that even with invitation designers and calligraphers, no calligraphers that I've ever met have the exact same style from one to the next, the exact same personality, the exact same way that they, you know, write with their letters and the way that they think about how they want their glyphs to, or their flourishes to port be portrayed and things like that. And so I definitely want to harp on hugely that there is enough room for everyone. And if you have an idea and if you have a drive and a passion for it, go for it and don't worry about the fact that somebody else is doing it because nobody can do it exactly like you do in the exact same way. So. Well, and I think especially for calligraphers and letters, which is the majority of the people watching right now, like you said, it doesn't matter if you learn from the same teacher, you're still going to have a slightly different style. And to me, mm -hmm. like, let's say locally, 
for me in Ottawa, for example, there are, I don't know, 15 other calligraphers, letters that do wedding work. And it honestly, like as much as it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes and you're like, oh crap, like she's a little bit better than me or she's, you know, she's pricing differently or she does this really unique thing. It's like, okay, but they also push you to be better. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just be honest. That's absolutely true. Yeah. And so like, I mean, that's a totally, I think that could be a totally different point, but let's, I mean, it's true. There is enough room for all of us and it makes us better that they're, that you're slightly worried that there's a little bit of competition. And it's funny that you say that because that was actually my next point. (laughs) There we go. Let's just keep moving right along. (laughs) So yes. So the third one is to maintain that great for her mentality because it's so easy to let the comparison monster eat you alive and to be like, oh my gosh, that should have been for me or that should have been wonderful. Or like when you're scrolling on Instagram and all of a sudden you see a picture and you're like, oh, and you want to throw your phone because you're like, that is something I wanted to do. Or, you know, why did she get this instead of me? Or why did this go to her instead of me? Or this is something that I should have gotten. But if you choose to dim, what is it? What? Is, oh, I'm going to botch it. What is that phrase? Mm. I'm going to look it up while you talk. What is it? Okay. So, but it's like blowing out somebody else's candle does not make yours burn brighter. Maybe that's what it is. Because... It's like, you can sit there and you can say, you know what, she is not great at this, or she doesn't deserve this, or she shouldn't have gotten that, or I should have gotten that. But at the same time, all of that does is make you angry inside. And it makes you look at things in a different way, not in a, this is great for her and be excited for her, but in like a, I don't even want to do anything now because that should have been me instead. And sometimes like if somebody has a really successful launch or if they work with a really amazing client And you're like, man, why didn't I get to work with them? But at the same time, if you put that comparison away and you choose excitement over it, it makes you grateful and it doesn't make you feel like you're not good enough. And especially when you're looking at things, it, you don't want to compare your beginning to somebody else's middle. And it might be that you've only been doing this for a couple of months and they've been doing it for 20 years. And so it's like, when you look at things differently and you look at them that way to be, to look at them in more of an inspirational view, to be like, wow, that is so awesome. I love that she just booked this client or I love that she got to create that design or, oh my gosh, I would love to learn how to do this rather than saying, I don't know how to do any of that. I'm never going to be good enough. I might as well just quit. So first of all, the quote is a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But like when I looked it up, there's a lot of different variations of it, but I think that's the main one. Um, But what I was going to say is like that at this point, I think is probably one of the hardest for people is like not comparing yourself, especially when it comes to art and, you know, like things that are really subjective because you're constantly going to look at your own and be like, oh my God, she's better than me. Or like, oh, I really like the way she flourishes and I can't do that and blah, blah, blah. But this is why, like, this is the, for me, this is like the epitome of why community over competition is so important because let's say you're on Instagram and you look around and you see someone else in Ottawa or in Florida or whatever, wherever you are doing calligraphy, who is your competition, and you've never met them, you've never talked to them, you look at them and you're like, oh, I hate I hate her. I hate her. She's like in my space and I don't want her here and blah, blah, blah. But let's say on the other hand, this is someone that you've met, you've gone for coffee with them, you've hung out with them, you've like made an effort, you're genuinely going to be happy for that person. Like there's, absolutely, it's just so important to like actually care about that and everything you just said, I'm not going to repeat it all, but that's, to me, that's what makes the difference. It's like, if you actually take the time to become that person's friend, it's not hard to be happy for them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Versus like, it's like an anonymous face on the internet and you just automatically hate them because they're taking your clients, you know, it's just so much easier if you know them and you care about them. Yeah. But even like, cause us having a conference every year, we have a conference and there's, we only have 25 people that can come every year. So it's, it stays pretty small, but we technically were the original creative conference back in 2011. And now there's tons of conferences everywhere. There's every, you can go onto Google and you can find, you know, hundreds all across the world now. And very easily I can be like, you know what? We were the first ones. And so who and everybody else, but that's not the way that I look at things at all. I, there was a woman who just started her very first creative conference and I sent her an Instagram story message the other day when I found out she was starting because I was excited because I might be a little bit too peppy for people or they might not necessarily want to come to ours for whatever reasons it is, 
But in my opinion, I would much rather have you go to a conference. If it's ours, fantastic. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to meet you. If it's another one, go and have fun. Like I would not have ever met you had I not gone to the conference, you know, this past summer. And there's so many other people that you can meet when you go and when you go in person. And if I would look at it from a, our conference is the best and you can't go to any others but ours, that just makes me look bad. So, <clears throat> well, and that brings me to like a, a point I was going to make about this. Like there's, there's people who, if in, in your case, let's say conferences, if you were the first person and then this other lady that you saw on Instagram was going to start one and you just like ignored her, didn't want her to see any of your stuff. You like thought about her every time you posted something and you're like, is she going to go on and look at what I'm doing and copy it and just be like all <laughs> snotty versus there are the people who like you reach out and send a message and be that support system for that person. And I guarantee you, she's going to give you so much love in, in response to that. And like, if say she gets really big and successful in the future, she'll probably reach out to you and have you come do a talk or she would, you know, mm -hmm. she'd send people to your conference if hers got full and stuff like that, as opposed to like trying to hold everything. Like there's just, I mean, I could go yeah. forever and we're going to oh, keep yeah. talking no, about, but like, we can go on and on about this for sure. <laughs> but for me, like for me, for example, I think this is one that people listening will relate to when I was first starting, like I literally knew nothing about calligraphy. I was brand new to it, but like you, I had that pull, like for some reason I knew I wanted to do this. And mm -hmm. one of the biggest names at the time was Cherie. She's pieces calligraphy. And okay. I, you know, I listened to her tutorials. I like watched her YouTube channel. I was following her on Instagram and I sent her a message and I said like, Hey, Sharice, love what you're doing. Uh, I I'm thinking of getting into doing all of this. I would love to just like chat with you. And she's like, here's my phone number. Give me a call. And we got on the phone and we talked for like two hours and she was just the most helpful and genuine, lovely person. And now let's four years later, she's been on this YouTube show. We've done some collabs together, like all kinds of stuff. And that never would have happened if she had just like ignored me and not wanted me to get any of her information. You know what I mean? So like, it's just such a happier place. Yes, absolutely. I could not agree with that more. So yeah, absolutely. For sure. Love it. Was that point number three or four? That or was two? number three. <laughs> I think that was number three. Okay. We're going to go with number three. <laughs> All right. Okay. So number four is that it builds credibility and it fosters relationships. So like, for example, there is somebody that I'm thinking of in particular, and she has now she's an artist and she's a watercolor artist. And she started out as doing stationery. And then she branched out and she realized that watercolor artistry was her sweet spot. And now she doesn't do stationery anymore. Now she just does watercolor artistry. And that is what she's known for. And she works with calligraphers and she works with stationers and she works with all these other people, but all she has to do is paint. They get to do everything else. And she has now become the go-to name that they say, Hey, I need some watercolor artistry done. I need this crest done. I need, you know, this monogram created. I don't want to do it or I don't have the skills or I don't want to use clip art for lack of a better word. I know that that's like, so not the right word to use, like using assets or graphics or anything like that. And so now they go to her. And so every single time that somebody says, I need this, they say her name over and over and over again. You see it in comments listed. And by doing that, not only does the person that says her name foster that relationship with her, because then they'll go like, and they'll be like, Hey, I heard about you from so-and-so, and this is something that I need in, and I heard about you from this group. Can you please help me? And so then the watercolor artist is grateful for that person who said their name, but then the person who said their name also is fostering that relationship with another potential client. Like, and so it builds that community mindset even more. Yeah, so I have a <laughs> tangible example of how useful this is as well. And okay. I mean, when you're talking about like, uh, I, stationary is a good example. Like you have someone who's really good at doing watercolor. You have someone who's really good at doing calligraphy, someone who's really good at the graphic design. Like those people work really well together. But for me, wow. it can, it can be a lot more uh, like similar, a lot more overlap. So what I, what I mean is in Ottawa, and I haven't said this yet, but we have like the epitome of community over competition in Ottawa. We all like, we have a lettering crew in Ottawa and we get together. And I think that's becoming really like common in big cities, which I love, but we like, I think there's probably 12 to 15 of us. We get together every once in a while, like maybe twice a year. And we all just kind of hang out and get to know each other. And there's one thing we do at every meeting where we go around and we ask everybody, what is the one thing that you want referrals for? Like if I have a client come to me and say, I have this project and to me it's like, eh, I don't really think I would want to do that. Now I know exactly who in Ottawa 
wants that type of job and mm-hmm. wants to be referred that and it has been so helpful like I've gotten referrals from those people those people have gotten referrals from me and it makes it easier for all of us to be able to pass work on and it also builds like you said our credibility to the client who comes to me and says I need this job and I say oh I don't really do that but here's four people that I think would be great for your project and they can easily go to that so it's so helpful to just have that kind of understanding of the competition around you and just make them part of your like your referral system Mm -hmm. I love that and that on that same note too like with that referral system sometimes life happens and sometimes you can't do things and it's either that you can tell say you know what I have this going on I can't handle this personally and so too bad peace out see you later you gotta find somebody else or you can say this is something that I can't do but let me refer you to this person instead who I know can take care of you really well they don't necessarily need to know that you've got something personal going on like in your life if you don't want to share that with them but to be able to say I you know or I'm fully booked for this month or for your wedding date but here is somebody else that automatically feels makes that client feel better coming to you and they might want to come back to you again in the future because they're gonna say you know what she took really good care of me last time without me even asking for these referrals and she automatically sent them to me for excuse me for these people that she thought would be really great moving forward yep so I love that me too <laughs> Okay, number five. Um, this one I absolutely love. The world needs more creativity. Oh my goodness, I can stand on a pedestal and talk about this one all day long. My children go to a school. My my son is in preschool. My daughter's in kin- meh, whoo, first grade. Get it right, mama. And it's a new she, it's a new school year. I'll I'll let it slide. Um, but she only has art for her special area, and they are working on that. They're working on bringing it back, but. She does not have music. She does not have anything like that. She has art and they have PE every day. But to know that she only has art once every other week drives my mama heart bonkers. And she comes home and she wants to doodle and draw and sketch and do all these things. And she sees me doing those things also, but she, the world needs more creativity. Like, can you imagine if everything was just like black and white and in a sans serif font? How boring would that be? Like, look behind my wall. Like this creative, this wall is all small business owners. And it's something almost all that one needs to that one I'm working on but it's just one of those things sorry that was a hobby I'll be fine that I was like okay this is perfect but everything else is small business owners and it's because every single person behind me use their own creativity to make art like I can see on your wall that floral painting that you've got in the background it's creative and we all need art in our spaces and I have other prints that are in front of me that I switch out I swap things out all the time because I want to be creatively inspired by the people that I'm surrounded with and I don't just want to have plain, boring, black and white notebooks. Like I am a bullet journaler and I have one in every single color and pattern that you can think of. It's something that I just, every time I'm in a store, I'm like, oh, there's a new dot code notebook. I'm going to get this one, even though I don't need it. Because I want to have that creative space to put things. And the world right now, for some reason, art is getting put like on the back burner and budgets are getting cut. And I'm like, I'm probably one of the ones screaming like, no, don't cut it. Don't let that go away. Because artistry is huge and I feel like it's kind of starting to come back like I feel like there's maybe this little movement coming with it but creativity is something that is so necessary and if you have that creative desire and that creative drive in your soul and it's like a burning passion of yours please don't let it just sit there like please do something with it if I'm like sounds like I'm begging maybe I am (laughs) but it's just one of those things that the world needs more and more creativity and there is enough to go around and please just don't make it go away. So. I feel like you're preaching to the choir right now. I know. The people, the people watching this are like, yes, <laughs> and they all it's just a lot. Something I feel so strongly about. <sighs> and a, a lot of the audience also has uh, young kids. I know that just from like my, being in the Facebook groups and um, having all the students in my course and stuff. And 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 students in the courses, like the the in person courses that I teach. I have all these, these parents that are just like, do you teach this for kids? Because like my kid didn't even learn how to write cursive in school. I'm like, oh my God. And it drives me, it, it, ah, ah, and I write cursive. And so I'm like, my daughter has no idea what I'm writing down. She can't read it. I'm like, that's not okay. (laughs) Okay. So number six, um, this is something we kind of touched on a little bit ago, a little bit, a little bit ago, but stay in your lane. That is a huge huge one that I think community over competition is for me for wedding invitations. I wanted to be known as the person that you came to if you wanted letterpress, if you wanted Southern, if you wanted it to be an heirloom kind of an invitation style with, you know, curls and squirrels and calligraphy included. 
But if you wanted sand or if you wanted serif fonts that were like all block letters, I was not your girl. And I tried to go out that route a couple of times and it just, it felt like I had an itchy wool sweater on. And I was like, this is just not me. I can't put something out there that doesn't feel like me. And I would much rather be a master of one thing and say, this is what I am known for. And this is what I'm amazing at. And this is something that I love. And then at the same time, these are other people that I want to support in their businesses because they're doing and showing their true gifts. And this is a way that we can all support each other in that kind of a way versus trying to be all, do all, all those things. So, which I think is really hard when you're first getting started. Like you said, you, you tried it for a bit. It felt like an itchy wool sweater and it does take trying it to feel that and to understand like what that would feel like. But I, I think there's probably so many people who are going to relate to this for like, I did at the beginning, I took on absolutely everything because I think mm -hmm. as, as a super creative person and as someone who is like scrappy and especially if you're starting your own business, like you're scrappy and you're creative, there's no question about it. And so those are the types of people who also are like, I could figure this out. I could do this myself. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have to pay someone to do that for me or I don't have to support someone else. If I could just do it myself. Like, and that mindset like creeps in everywhere and you're just like, no, I could do this. I could do this. I can do this. And there's a difference between like being scrappy and saving money where you can versus, you know, saying, no, I'm going to support another small business and give this to somebody who's really good at it kind of thing. But mm -hmm. I remember when I first started, like, I mean, I, if you could see my whole office right now, it's proof. Like I have the mink machine for foiling. I have like all the different things. <laughs> like I have every single thing I could ever possibly need, but I don't do any of those things. Like I thought I might at the beginning, mm -hmm. I maybe did like one or two client projects with that stuff. And now it just sits on a shelf and it's like, I know what I'm good at. I only need like mm -hmm. three or four pens for it. I don't need all the stuff that I have in here. And so like, mm -hmm. but, but like you said, or like, like I said about what you said, you don't necessarily know that until you start doing it. Like you, you got to figure out what your lane is before you can, you know, narrow mm -hmm. it down. And it could be too, like, um, I use companies like Printed Mint and Printful a lot. And it used to be when I had my Etsy shop and both of those, if you're not familiar, they're both drop shipping companies where you submit your designs and then they print them and put them onto the different materials for you. And before Printed Mint came out with their gold foil, I had a mink machine and I would literally foil. I was one of the first ones, I will say this, I was one of the first ones that discovered them, I like to say, and like started using their gold foil prints when it was customizable back in like 2015, when it just, when they just started. But I had a conversation literally last week with somebody and she's going to start doing t-shirts and she feels that they're right in with her brand, right in line with everything. And she was like, okay, so I'm just going to get a screen printing machine and all of the tools. And I was like, wait, 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 what? Like, no. And she's like, it won't take that long and it's not that expensive. And we literally walked through it and I said, okay, so let's think about this. If you get a screen printing machine, then you have the screen printing machine, you have the ink, you have the blank t-shirts, you have all these things. Plus you have the packaging, the processing and all of that. I said, how much are you going to sell your t-shirts for? And she said, um, I priced it out and $24 is going to be for a shirt. And I said, okay, it's $24 for one shirt. How long will it take you to do one shirt? And she goes about probably 45 minutes to an hour. And I said, okay, 45 minutes to an hour for one shirt. And then I said, what if you put it over to Printful instead? And she's like, wait, what? Why, why would I want to do that? I can just do it by myself. And I said, is this where your zone of genius lies? Do you want to be known as a, as a screen printer where you can customize it all? Or do you want to be the person who designs it and then sends it to Printful and lets them take care of it and lets them print it and ship it and drop it and send it directly to your customer so that it's done? And I said, it can be a five minute thing or it can be a five hour thing. Because heaven forbid, if you do one shirt and you mess up the screen printing, then you have to do another one. And then you're eating away your cost. And it's, then you have to deal with shipping it and going to the post office and doing all that stuff. And it's like, how much is your time worth for you to do it versus to let somebody else do it? Um, I think about this too with Printed Mint when I switched all of my designs over from me doing them gold foil with my mink versus going over and having Printed Mint do it. It ended up being a $2 difference, $2 when I broke things down to say it was $2, it cost me $2 more per order for them to do it instead of me. And it was like, does it make sense for me to save that $2, but then me spend my time printing and foiling and cutting and putting it in the sleeves and putting it in the package and putting the sticker on and mailing it out? Or does it just make sense for me to click, 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 done? And so it's like, where can you think of in your lane, in your zone of genius? And it's weird that we kind of went off on this tangent a little bit, but specifically speaking to printers, like if you choose to print it all yourself or outsource it to a printing company or a t-shirt company or a mug company, because that is what they are really great at. And we don't necessarily need to do all of those on our own kind of a thing. Sorry, totally. I feel like I'm keep getting on a pedestal, like preaching today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
That's why you're here. <laughs> That's why you're here. Very um, passionate about this, Becca. Very passionate. <laughs> yeah. No, but I love that one because I think that it is really tempting, like I said, as a scrappy person mm-hmm. and a creative person to be like, yeah, but I could just do it. Like, I'll do it in front of the TV or I'll do it. And 100% I did. Like, that story, I was like, yeah, I've I've done that. I've 100. Mm-hmm. I had, like, 500 mugs that I had um, – I like did a digital design. I sent it to a company who glass etched it on all of these glass mugs. And then I got them all back and I manually added gold rub and buff to all of them. Like put, do you know what rub and buff is? It's like that gold paint. You put it in the etching and then you buff it off. 500 mugs. I did this for, okay. Instead of just paying the extra, whatever it was like two bucks to get the guy to do it for me. I was like, no, I can do that. Like in front of the TV. Oh my my God. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And the best part is like, this was four years ago and I still have them. Like I didn't sell them all. They're like, it's just, I mean, I never tried really that hard to sell them all. See, so how many of us though can identify with that? Like I still have product that's in these cabinets behind me that I haven't sold. And I'm like, I can't throw it away. I can't get rid of it because I- Because I I spent so much time doing it. (laughs) Right. And I'm not going to say like with the whole comment of being scrappy and doing things on your own, I'm not going to say like, don't do anything by yourself because for a conference every year, I still use my make for certain aspects for a conference every year, but it's for small quantities or it's for gifts or for things that I want to do for people like as a, as a gifted thing, but not necessarily something that I want to have in my shop because heaven forbid, if it sells really well and all of a sudden you have to do a thousand prints or a thousand mugs and you're like, holy moly, how am I going to get these out in a week? Whereas, you know, if you bring in another company that can take care of all that shipping, like, and that's a whole other conversation, like with bringing in like a manufacturing company or a shipping, you know, distributor and things like that. But it's just, when it comes to those things, think about where, what you want to do the most and where your zone of genius is. And then how can you bring in other companies to help you to be more efficient with what it is that you do within your business? That's how it relates back to community over competition. <laughs> yes, I was like, we're going to tie this one back in. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, are okay. we at, is this seven? We're at the last this one? The seventh okay. One. The seventh one. Your strongest competition is yourself. And I want you to always think about things that, so number seven is your competition is yourself because it is the best way to push yourself. Because if you are building a community mindset, and if you're saying, I want things to go better, every single time. The only thing you you should and could be comparing yourself to is what you were a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. Because when you look at it that way and you look at it to say, you know what, this is where I started. Like I will fully admit right here on your YouTube channel, my very first wedding invitation was done in Microsoft Word. I used clip art and it was printed on Office Depot blue cardstock. Like not even the fancy stuff, but it was on that. (laughs) And it like, it makes me want to uh, a little bit saying that out loud. And now I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh. But the last invitation that I did was done with a silk ribbon, with a wax seal, with a vellum overlay, with a double thick letter pressed edge, gold foil edged painted with three colors. There was one gold foil with two colors of letter press, custom monogram, custom um, envelope liner, calligraphy on the front, custom stamps, like all of that. And so when I sit here and I compare my little Microsoft Word invitation, with that final letterpress suite. And it was like, holy cow, think about this girl and think about how far you've come. Like it, it, I can't get rid of the first one because it was where I, where I started. But to now look back and see, look at where you've come from and to look and see how different things can be when you compare yourself to yourself. And when you say, I wanna be better than I was last week or last month, even when setting your schedule and setting your, like if you, plan your Instagram content. Or if you're like, you know what? I want to get on my stories. I only got on stories once last week. I want to get on three times this week. And if you compare yourself in that way and you put it out as a competition to yourself to say, I want to be better each and every day. Tomorrow when I get up, it's a new day and I'm going to be better than I was yesterday. And if you have that mindset, it, it kind of like starts to spill out of you. And this is one of those ways that social media you can use for good. Because I feel like the social media trap, a lot of people can get stuck in like the, oh my gosh, I, I don't like going on because I, I feel frustrated. But how many of us have actually scrolled through to our own Instagram feeds to see what it was like five years ago or four years ago? I know for me, I started my, I think my first post was in like 2013 and my feed now, and I'm talking about my personal feed more so than the creative founders feed, but on my personal feed, looking back and seeing my first shots that I did, like I was using the burnout edging and all that kind of stuff. And it was dark and it was like, oh gosh, what was I doing? Like, how does this even promote my own work? 
but now to see it and it's like I have come so far with even just learning how to take pictures and style my work and like show it things but compare yourself to yourself and make yourself your own hardest competition and put your blinders on and don't worry about what anybody else is doing and just think today I will be better than I was yesterday tomorrow I'll be even better than I was today I love that point I love that so much it's like community over competition but you're your own community and your own yeah. competition. I love that. Yeah, because you have to take care of yourself and you have to make sure that, you know, we don't run ourselves dry. And this is a whole other, I feel like I need to come back like three or four or five more times for more conversations. But it's like just knowing that, you know, you have to take care of yourself and push yourself, but in a way that you're taking care of yourself too, because self-care is a whole other topic that could be talked about in this specifically. But know that this is something that I'm really good at and this is something I want to get better at every single day and to work hard at that. But then also to have that community mindset to say, this is something that I started at and I started here, but now I'm here, but share it in a way that people can be inspired and encouraged by what you have to say. Or things. Yeah. I love the comparing yourself to yourself thing. And like, mm -hmm. it, it kind of goes hand in hand with my favorite part that I would have picked out of this is like, stay in your own lane, like put mm -hmm. your blinders on and stay in your own lane, compare yourself to yourself. Mm -hmm. But I think that if I could go back and give myself one piece of advice, like to not get so overwhelmed with this whole community over competition and like trying to figure out where I stand, it would be to try and narrow down exactly what I wanted to do a little bit earlier because mm -hmm. I struggled a lot with, like we talked about trying to do everything and being like, Oh, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. And that, made it really hard for me to be happy for other people because any job that they got, I was like, Oh, I could do that. Why didn't they come to me for that? So like that would be, I think that would be the biggest turning point for me is like knowing exactly what I want to do and like not being afraid to say no to all the other things and pass them on. You don't <laughs> feel, you don't feel resentful when other people are doing the other jobs that you have told yourself, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. So. And there's, there's a phrase that I use quite a bit and it's just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I think about that all the time, specifically when it comes to branching out and offering more and more and more things, because when I focused in specifically only on weddings, my income that year actually more than doubled from only focusing in on weddings, regardless of all the other things that I was getting a little bit here and there and everywhere. When I focused in only on weddings, then it built tremendously because I became that one person to, to get known for this one thing. And instead of having all the things where I try to do every single thing, when I honed in specifically only on weddings, that was the best businesses, business decision I ever could have done. Totally. Yep. I love it. I think we gave a lot of really good examples and like people are going to be like, okay, maybe I can embrace my competition. now. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's hard. Um, like it's, it's not an easy thing to do. And it takes work to do, but it's something that once you get there and once you're like, okay, you know what, I am just going to embrace this and I'm going to connect with these people and I'm not going to feel like I'm by myself. And you know what? I love the way that she styled that. And I'm going to leave a comment on her Instagram post or I'm going to send her a message and say, Hey, I know that you're only a city away. Would you like to get together for coffee sometime? Because especially as creatives, it's hard to find people local to you. Like for me, all of my favorite, like best friends are all across the U S and I have a couple in the UK now and I'm like, oh, I'm all by myself, but down the street, I have, there's other people that are in the creative industry that they may not do exactly what you do, but next time, hopefully when they're trying to learn something for us business wise, anyways, they will want to come to us and say, Hey, I know this is something you're really great at. And then it just kind of, things can only get better and they can only build up when you embrace that community mindset versus being competitive and being like, don't even come near me kind of a thing. Yeah. I think that's the perfect, like, Yes. The end. Yes. Um, okay. okay. So Kristen, okay. where yes. can you tell people a little bit more about like what, what they can get from you, where they can find you, what kind of resources you can have, like who, who needs, who needs your stuff and where can they find it? Okay. So basically easiest way to put it, our website is where we have everything. That's our home base. Um, society for creative founders.com is our website. And on Instagram, we are creative founders. So just creative founders, the two words put together. And for my personal, my personal feed is Kristen Wilson creative. Um, just as far as that goes, but I post a lot of mom stuff and you know, whole other things separate from creative founders, but it's the entirely the personal side, but creative founders, definitely. If you want to find us on Instagram and then that can lead you down the rabbit hole of our website and our blog posts and things like that. And, um, we have an annual conference every fall. So at the time this goes live, it'll be just a few weeks after this. And then it's every single fall that we have that. And then we have our membership community, which opens two times a year for people to join. So. And as we speak, this is going live 
it's open. So yes. if anybody is interested in finding like their own community to have community over competition in, it's open right now. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're watching this in the future, it might be on a wait list. You could, the links will all be down below and people can go and check yeah. it out. Yeah. Um, amazing. Thank you so much, Kristen, for coming on here. Thank you so much for asking me. I loved being on here. <laughs> all right. I will talk to you later. Okay. Sounds good.